All right. So, hello, everybody. My name is Evangelos. I'm a final year PhD student. And today I'm going to present you with an extract of my PhD research on the life cycle carbon footprint of lithium ion batteries for electric vehicles. So, right now, the education is uh, on the top of the agenda for meeting climate goals in the transport sector. And in order to achieve mass market penetration of EVs, we need lots of lithium ion batteries. The demand is expected to increase by a factor of 10 by 2030, which creates an imperative need for supply of sustainably produced batteries. One of the key sustainability metrics of lithium ion batteries is their carbon footprint. And we have identified four key factors driving it lower and lower. Uh, the first one is increases in manufacturing scales. Second is the decarbonization of electricity. Third is the increases in ener the energy density of the battery cells. And finally, we have the emergence of battery recycling. So the aim of this work is to quantify the combined effect of those developments in reducing the carbon footprint of lithium ion batteries within the next decade. Uh, we primarily focus on China as it's the most of the manufacturing capacity is located there at the moment, but we've done some work about other countries and I would be happy to discuss about it with you in the meeting rooms. So just to give you a brief overview of uh, the models that we have developed. Uh, first, we have the production system where you can see the active material preparation, then cathode and anode production, and then battery cell assembly and battery pack assembly. Uh, next, we have the use phase, which we have excluded from this study, but we've done some work on it and you will see, you will hear more about it at, uh, in Laura's poster later today. And after the battery is used and it reaches its end of life, uh, the battery cell materials are, re are recovered through hyd hydrometallurgical treatment, while other metal recovery pathways are used for the battery packs supporting structures. Uh, now let's look at the results. And I have here the, the amount of greenhouse gas emissions uh, emitted for producing a kilowatt hour of battery pack capacity. And I have also included the reference years for each scenario. So the first bar is uh, corresponds to production of a battery approximately six years ago in a pilot scale plant. While the next one uh, corresponds to production of the same battery in a gigafactory. So what caused this 40% decline of the carbon footprint is uh, mainly the increased production scales, which reduced the energy consumption for cell manufacturing. Next, we have uh, uh, increases in the energy density of the battery cells, which are achieved, achieved by modifying the underlying battery chemistry. And together with the decarbonization of electricity, we see a gradual decrease in the carbon footprint of batteries. Finally, the emergence of uh, battery recycling uh, reduces the materials footprint, so this blue part of the graph, due to the displacement of primary material. Something else to note is that as the energy footprint, so this orange part of the graph, goes lower and lower, uh, battery recycling becomes more and more effective in reducing the overall carbon footprint of the battery. But uh, reductions don't stop here. There are certain things that are not shown in this graph. Uh, first one is uh, cell manufacturing with 100% renewable energy, and many manufacturers have been committed to it. 
Next, uh, there is further decarbonization of the battery material supply chains. And finally, there are some possible further developments in battery manufacturing, like uh, dry coating, which was announced by Tesla in their battery day, and further increases in the scale of battery manufacturing to several gigawatt hours. So overall, it was shown here that increases in the energy density together with the decarbonization of electricity and the upscaling of battery plants uh, reduce the carbon footprint of a battery by approximately 80% within the next decade when compared to 2015 levels. That's all I had to say. Thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to discussing with you in the meeting rooms.